Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss our final tutorial for chapter 2 thermochemistry which will cover for 2.4 bond harbor cycle. Learning objectives for both NFTF and FTF questions are to construct bond harbor cycle for simple ionic solids using energy cycle diagram and energy level diagram. So we have learned we have two types of representations when doing one Haber cycle. So you need to know how to do energy cycle and also energy level. Next, you need to know how to calculate the enthalpy changes using one Haber cycle. And lastly, to compare the lattice energy of ionic solids. So for non face to face questions, you are given table one consists of reactions and also the value of delta H. So you need to construct the one Haber cycle for lithium chloride and calculate its latest energy. So you need to find that latest energy. We know that latest energy that involved in bond harbor cycle is lattice formations from gases ion to form solid. So you are going to use five types of enthalpies in order to get the latest energy. So we're going to arrange it in order. We'll start with enthalpy of formations. So if we look at the reactions given here, the, this one gonna be your enthalpy of formations and then followed by atomizations of lithium. So we have one mole of gases atom in here. So this is going to be your atomizations. Another one, atomizations for Cl, going to be the third reactions. And then we have ionizations energy means electron to be removed. Whenever they say electron to be removed, means the electron must be on the right hand side. So this is going to be the fourth reactions takes place. And lastly, the electron affinity where electron to be accepted should be on your left. Okay, so this will be your fifth. And lastly, your latest energy is going to be the sixth. The question didn't specify what kind of diagram they want you to construct. So let's do the energy cycle diagram for this question then. So we'll start with enthalpy of formations for lithium chloride. We have lithium solid, we add with half of the Cl2 gas to form LiCl in solid. Then we'll proceed with atomizations for both species. So we're going to form one mole of lithium gases and also one mole of chlorine gases. Then from lithium, we're going to do the ionization energy to form Li+. And then for Cl, because it's going to accept electron, then they will have electron affinity of negative 364 kilojoule. So lastly, we're going to add them all together in clockwise and anti-clockwise manners like this. So you're going to equate delta H1 equal to delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4 plus delta H5 plus delta H6. You want to find the delta H6, set it aside, and lastly, you'll get negative 845 kilojoule per mole. Next, we need to compare lattice energy of lithium chloride and sodium chloride and you have to provide some reasoning behind your selection. So between these two, we have lithium chloride with greater lattice energy than sodium chloride. This is due to its ionic size. So we've learned already about this in chapter 3 last semester named predictable. Since lithium is located above um, sodium, then the ionic size will be smaller. Therefore, electrostatic forces attractions between lithium and chlorine is much stronger than the sodium and chlorine. For face-to-face -face questions, we need to use the data below to construct a bond harbor cycle for copper to oxide and determine its latest energy. The question is still the same, but now the molecule has changed. So we have copper and also oxygen. So copper with 2 plus charge, oxygen with 2 minus charge, so you're going to get CuO. But then, if you look at the information given down here, you are not given thermochemical equations. Instead, you are given only the name of the enthalpy. So, your work is to make your own thermochemical equation based on the definitions given here. So, before we write the thermochemical equations, we need to first rearrange the order. So, we'll start with enthalpy formations, followed by atomizations of copper, then we have atomizations of oxygen, proceed with first ionization and second ionization energy for copper, and lastly, the electron affinity for oxygen. So we have seven, including the latest is eight reactions. 
Okay. If you look at the instructions given, they didn't specify any method to be used. Since we already have done the energy cycle diagram in previous questions, let's do energy level diagram for these questions. Okay. We'll write the thermochemical equations for each reaction. So we have this is your enthalpy of formation since we have one mole of copper to outside formed followed by atomizations energy of copper and then we have atomizations for oxygens followed by first and second ionization energy for copper then we have first and second electron affinity for oxygen and lastly the lattice energy that we want to find so now we're going to transfer these informations into energy level diagram Please be reminded the difference between energy cycle and energy di level diagram is that energy cycle can start from above or below. But for energy level diagram, we need to start from zero. So starting from zero, we have formations of negative value. So they're going to have an arrow pointing downwards and positive value with arrow pointing upwards. Okay, now let's start. So we'll start with origin with enthalpy. And then our first reactions is enthalpy of formation. Initially, they haven't reacted. Once they react, they're going to have delta H1. Proceed with delta H2, which is the atomizations of copper. And then we have atomizations of oxygen. And then we have first and second ionization energy of calcium. Proceed with first electron affinity of oxygen. And then we have second electron affinity. So electron affinity is not always negative. If we look at the value here, we have negative on the first affinity. But then for second electron affinity, we have positive value. That's why we have to make the upward arrow. And lastly, we're going to combine these two gases ion to form CaCl2, which we call this as lattice energy. Lastly, we're going to combine everything together in clockwise and anti-clockwise manner. So basically, if you move from here, down here and to here, this is what we call clockwise. And from here to here is anti-clockwise. Okay, so we're going to equal them together. Delta H1 is equal to delta H2 until delta H8. We want to find the delta H8, so rearrange them and then substitute the value. Lastly, you're going to get the final answer of negative 4097 kJ per mole. We have completed week 4 our 3 tutorial and also for the whole chapter 2 tutorial. So thank you for listening. Goodbye.